Corigliano d'Otranto is one of the 12 towns of Grecia Salentina and one of the nine towns which still conserve their fascinating and ancient dialect, the Greek. The urban, social and cultural development of the small town in the Salento is related to its Roman origins, but it was also influenced by the Byzantine culture of the Greek monks. In fact, the origin of the Hellenic name Corion refers to the existence of an ancient Byzantine village during the medieval period. There's also another interpretation, according to which the name could derive from the word cuore, namely hurt, a symbol present in the town's coat of arms too. The historic center of Corigliano d'Otranto is a mosaic of evocative small streets, which branch out from the castle to the wall village, and it preserves the characteristic features of its past, enriched by the typical and particular courtyard houses. Into a context of harmonious architectural integration, the majesty and fantasy of the aristocratic palace's front door are the backdrop of the simple and ancient peasant houses of the historic center, and they make Corigliano d'Otranto an authentic village. Palace Comi overlooks the central San Nicola Square, the heart of the historical center. It was the home of the Monimus family, remembered as benefactors and rich in possessions in the Walled Salento. It is a two-floor ancient palace built in 1755 to expand the pre-existing 17th century structure. The elegance and sumptuousness of the Palace Comi is visible in the facade richly decorated with classical motifs, even if it reflects the 18th century civil architectural canon. Supported by two ashlar columns in Lecce stone, a typical 18th century double arcade stands out with its particular beauty, at the center of which there is a suspended angel. Here, the refined craftsmanship of the 18th century stone cutters and artists gave life to flora ornamental decorations. The public fountain of Corigliano, dating back to the fascist period, is a magnificent architectural monument, which mixes the sumptuousness of the Greek art and the sobriety of the fascist architecture. A column decorated with high reliefs on its sides is placed at the center of a simple circular marble basin. Above the fountain, a big marble vase apparated the magnificent statue of the goddess Minerva, who extends towards the sky a cup to almost pay homage to the divinities. It was created by the local artist Nino Sisinni. His 13 years old little sister, Gina Sisinni, was the inspirational muse and model of the creative work. One of the most characteristic monuments in Corigliano is certainly the clock tower. It was built in 1644 and modified in its present structure in 1770, but we don't have certain references about the date of construction of the original tower. This information can be drawn from the Latin inscriptions present on the tower's second order. According to local tradition, 
the clock situated on the tower was taken from the Turks in 1536, after they were defeated in Castro by Giorgio de Monti, who liberated the town from their occupation. Among the most important cultural and historical works, there is the Arcade Lucchetti, in the historical center of the town. An ancient message engraved in stone is written in two different languages, Latin and Oriental, to be passed down from generation to generation. On the left side of the arcade you can admire a dog with a wedding ring in its mouth, which metaphorically represents the fidelity in marriage. A big star which overlooks and directs the moment represents the good luck of the marriage and thus the moral precepts to achieve a peaceful and happy life. The light emanating from the star is eclipsed by the constant presence of evil who takes the shape of a dragon kept on a leash by a princess and supervised by Saint George riding his horse. The same message is represented on the right side of the arcade, but now with symbols and references of the rental culture. Here, men and women are represented through the figures of two geese, intent on drinking in the same cup. In correspondence of the dog on the right side, a N with the same metaphorical interpretation is represented. The big tree of life is represented by a fig tree. A procession of angels on the lower arcade represents a funeral cortege and the afterlife is represented by the figure of the Archangel Michael and the symbol of the crab. The Castle de Monti is defined by the 19th century art critic Bacile di Castiglione as the most beautiful military and feudal architectural monument of the early 16th century in the Wall Terra d'Otranto. It is one of the few examples of a military fortress in the Salento. It still preserves intact the original moat which surrounds the outer perimeter. The castle's history dates back to the Middle Ages but it was completely restructured and modernized between 1514 and 1519 by Giovanni Battista de Monti, who has relied on local workers to adapt the Angevin castle to the new war needs and the old principles of military engineering. In fact, it has four imperious round towers at the angles of its quadrangular plan, which ensure the defense of the wall structure. The presence of many gunboats along the sides of the towers and of casemates to receive artillery from the ground floor and the first floor in case of siege denotes as once the castle of Corigliano d'Otranto was a safe and sacred place. When the original defensive function vanished in 1662, the Duke Francesco Trane refined the castle by building a new facade superimposed to the pre-existing one, adorning it with a series of allegorical statues, accompanied by inscriptions, aphorisms, modus and buses of great figures from the past. At the center, a statue with its effigy was realized, surrounded by the allegories of the justice and charity. Porta, from the Greek dialect cow and porta, 
linguistic contraction of South Dor is located near the castle and it represents one of the access points to the historical center that, with the walls, protected the town from possible external attacks. The caporta, simple in the architectural structure, is refined by a frame and on the upper part by the high relief of two figures, which on the sides support the civic and heraldic coat of arms of Giovan Battista de Monti. Once the inscription in Vidia Inopia Fa, present in the upper part, was clearly legible to invite the visitors to not envy what the walls still today contain inside. The San Nicolas de Bishop's Mother Church dates back to the second half of the 16th century, precisely in 1573, as indicated on the entrance portal. Its bell tower, divided in three orders and dating back to 1465, has originally another function, and only then it became an integrated part of the church. Four lions, also called marzocchi, are visible at the corners. They have function of lookout and they are the symbol of people's power. The mother church is elevated from the road surface of a few steps, enclosed in a strong and charming end rail in local stone and realized in the 1930s. The church is characterized by a Latin cross plan, with three naves, divided and supported by some columns. The covering of the central nave is decorated with ribbons and leaves. But the most attractive element is the mosaic floor, realized in 1877 by Maselli from Cutrofiano, along the same lines of the Otranto Cathedral's fine mosaic. of Codigliano along Via Moncenisio, enclosed in a small park which protects its integrity, you can admire one of the most suggestive tree species in the wall present Salento, the Vallonia oak, belonging to the family of Fagasi, such as the peach and the chestnut trees. It is about 15 meters high, with a foliage of 20 meters of diameter. The Vallonia oak, coming from the Middle East, and that now it is possible to admire only in the Salento area, it was considered in the past almost a sacred tree, a monument to nature and beauty, not only for its never-ending history, but also for the important role it had in the local economy. From their big acorns, you can extract the tannin, a substance useful for the production of lather, once a very common practice in Salento. The pozzelle, deep from 3 to 6 meters, were some ancient and rural artifacts ingenious and environmental friendly, used for the rainwater harvesting. 
they were realized by digging out a pit in the permeable ground and coating it with dry stones, which recalls the technique of construction of a pagliare. The living stones were placed in concentric circles to form even smaller circumferences stacked on top of each other. This formed a false dome, which ended with an opening called in Greek dialect buccale, placed at the same floor level of the ground. The opening was protected by a block of limestone where a hole called Bera is made to extract water from the subsoil. The Lacco de Lumurica in Corigliano d'Otranto was a place where once the unspoiled nature showed its majestic beauty. The Lacchi are some karstic depressions excavated over time by the rainwater, which periodically returns to fill them temporarily, forming some natural lakes full of animal and vegetal life. <laughs>